Hi and welcome to another video in our quantum computing series. In the previous video, we talked about single qubit gates and how they can be used to manipulate the state of a single qubit. Today we're going to talk about multi-qubit gates, involving 2 and 3 qubit. We will introduce the C0 gate, which is the quantum analog of the XOR gate. We will then show how the C0 gate, in combination with the single qubit gates we learned in previous video, would enable us to build simple circuits that swaps two qubit or generate maximally entangled states. We end with an example of a three qubit gate, called the Toffoli gate. Let's begin. Part 1. Classical versus quantum gates. One of the key differences between classical and quantum gates is the fact that, while classical gates in most cases have only one output no matter the amount of input bits, a quantum gate always has the same number of input and output qubit. This is because classical gates represent Boolean functions whose outcome is either true or false. On the other hand, quantum gates are actions that change the state of a physical quantum system, that is the qubit itself. Since the number of qubit is conserved during the computation, the number of outputs should in principle equals the number of inputs. Another key difference is that classical gates are most often not reversible. Logic gates that are reversible have a one-to-one -one mapping between vectors of inputs and outputs. Let's look at a few examples. The classical NOT gate is reversible, in the sense that we can track the input knowing the output. However, for other gates such as the XOR and the NEND gates, which are multiple input classical gates, it is impossible to know the input's vector for a given output. Clearly a necessary condition for a gate to be reversible is that it has the same number of input and output bits. Quantum gates, on the other hand, are simply unitary operators, herein denoted by U. Hence, we can use the adjoint version of the same quantum gate to undo the action of the gate. Part 2. Combining two Hilbert spaces. Let's first review the mathematical representation of systems with multiple qubit. Qubit and quantum gates are mathematically represented by matrices. Individual qubit are vectors that live in two-dimensional Hilbert space and quantum gates are linear transformations that act on these vectors. Consider a composite system comprising of two qubit, whose state vectors belong to the single qubit Hilbert spaces HA and HB. The state vector of the composite system, psi ket, is then given by the tensor product of the state vectors of the constituent system as shown. Here, we show explicitly how to perform the tensor product of two constituent state vectors. The tensor product takes the dimensionality from 1 by 2 to 1 by 4 as shown. Notice how each element of the first vector is being concatenate with the second vector. Since the state vector of the composite two-qubit system is a four-dimensional vector, there are a total of four basis vectors. It will be instructive to enumerate them. They are given by the zero tensor zero ket, one tensor zero ket, zero tensor one ket, and one tensor one ket. The general two qubit composite state vector can then be written as superposition of these basis state vectors, where the amplitude alpha zero zero, zero one, one zero, and one one must satisfy the normalization condition as shown. In general, if we have a n qubit system, the most general state will be a superposition of all the 2 to the n basis states with 2 to the n normalized complex coefficients, herein denoted by CK. The operators that act on this space are represented by 2 to the n by 2 to the n square matrices. We shall refer you to other videos in this playlist which discuss the mathematical representation of single and two qubit system in more details. Part 3. The two qubit C0 gate. The quantum C0 gate is also known as the controlled NOT gate. It is analogous to the classical XOR gate. 
we recall that the classical XOR gate is a two input gate. The output is zero when both inputs are the same and one otherwise. The mathematical operation it represents is the addition modulo 2 between the two inputs. The quantum counterpart of this gate is the C0 gate, whose circuit representation is as shown. It's a two inputs and two outputs gate. Here, the two input qubit are designated as the control and target qubit. The control qubit Q1 remains unchanged during the gate operation, but the target qubit Q2 becomes Q1 XOR Q2. With the truth table of the XOR operation in mind, we can easily figure out the action of this gate on the basis states of a two qubit system. We can summarize the action of the C0 gate on the two qubit system as follows using the notation we introduced earlier for the basis states of the two-qubit system. Knowing how the basis vectors change, we can come up with the matrix form for the C0 gate as follows. To see this, we recall the column vector form of the basis states. Each column of the matrix form of linear transformations can always be interpreted as how each of the basis vectors change after its application. Notice that the first basis does not change at all. And the same is true for the second one. Now, the third and fourth basis states are switched. This explains the matrix form of the C0 gate. Part 4. Swapping qubit with C0 gates. We show here the circuit that performs the two qubit swap. The task of this circuit is self explanatory. It swaps the states of qubit 1 and 2. We note that the swap circuit consists of three C0 gates in a row, alternating the control and target bits with each C0 application. To help understand the application of this circuit, recall the X or gate truth table. The output is 1 when the initial inputs are not equal to each other. Recall that XOR's operation is equivalent to the addition modulo 2. With this truth table, we can easily evaluate the operation of A XOR XOR B. One can readily verify the following identity as shown. Take note of this identity as we will be using it in what follows. Let's go over the circuit operation step by step. At time t0, the state of the two qubit system is q1, q2. At time t1, we apply the C0 operation using q1 as the control qubit and q2 as the target. Recall that the C0 gate preserves the state of the control qubit and performs an XOR operation in the target qubit. At time t2, another C0 is applied, but alternating the control and target qubit. At this point, the control qubit is Q1 XOR Q2, so the target qubit becomes Q1 XOR Q1 XOR Q2. Using the identity that we obtained earlier, we can see that this operation is equal to Q2. After the third C0 application, the control and target qubit are switched again. The target qubit is now Q1 XOR Q2 XOR Q2. This is equivalent to Q1, per the highlighted identity. This concluded the demonstration that the above circuit indeed provides a swap operation between two qubit states. Part 5 Circuit for Bell States Generation The Bell States are two qubit states with maximum entanglement. This property is especially useful for certain applications. In the 0-1 basis, they are written as shown, denoted by the phi plus minus and the psi plus minus. In what follows, 
we shall show how to generate these states using a combination of single qubit gates and the C-naught gate. Here is the circuit that produces the Phi plus Bell state. Using a combination of the Automar gate and the C-naught gate, starting from 2 qubit initialized as the ket0. In the next step, the Automar gate is applied to the first qubit with no action on the second qubit. When H acts on the zero ket, it becomes the plus ket. Working out the tensor product explicitly, we obtain the following 4 by 1 column vector. Then we apply the C0 gate, whose matrix form was shown in part 3 of this video. The resulting vector can be expressed as superposition of the two qubit basis states as follows. We can readily see that it is equivalent to the phi plus bell state. Hence, we have shown that by applying the H gate to the first qubit followed by a C0 gate, we can obtain one of the maximally entangled two qubit states. Next, we show how the phi minus state can be obtained from the phi plus circuit by adding a z gate to the second qubit. As we have seen in the previous video, the z gate is one of the phase change gates. It applies a relative phase of pi between the basis states. This way, we can obtain the phi minus bell state. If instead of a z gate, we use the inverter gate, we obtain the psi plus state. This is readily seen as the X gate swaps the 0 and 1 states of the second qubit. Lastly, by adding a Z gate to the previous circuit, we can get the psi minus state. We have thus learned that the C0 is very important gate in quantum computing because it enables the creation of entanglement between two qubits. Entanglement represents a new resource in computation, and enables quantum systems to process information in ways that are impossible with classical computing. Part 6. Toffoli Gate. The 3 Qubit Gate. In what follows, we will give an example of a 3 Qubit Gate. The Toffoli Gate is also called the Controlled c not Gate. It is the 3 qubit extension of the C0 that we just learned. Instead of having 1, we now have 2 control qubit. The target qubit is given by the XOR operation of Q3 with the product of Q1 and Q2. The truth table of the Toffoli gate is presented as follows. Note that the first two, the control qubit, never change their states. The target qubit flips its state if the first two qubit are 1. This is exactly the Boolean operation, XOR of Q3 with the product of Q1 and Q2. In what follows, we seek the matrix representation of the Toffoli gate. These are the basis states for a 3-qubit system. Notice that now we have 8 basis states, which is equal to 2 to the power of 3. A system of n qubit will be spanned by 2 to the power of n basis states. From the truth table of the Toffoli gate, we can see that this is how the basis states are transformed. Note that when the first two qubit states contain one zero state, the third qubit states remain the same. This is again consistent with the Boolean operation of the Toffoli gate, that is XOR of Q3 with the product of Q1 and Q2. However, when both the first bits are in the one ket, the third qubit flips. This is again consistent with the Boolean operation of the Toffoli gate. In other words, this means that the first six basis states remain unchanged while the last two are flipped, which gives rise to the following matrix form of the Toffoli gate. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes.